Here we are. Good morning. Good morning, Daily Huddlers. Today's Wednesday, where Catherine Sable and I share conversations with you about communication and relationships, because we know that more effective, authentic communication builds better relationships, and that's what builds better families, better communities, and better business. <clears throat> so to get us in the headspace of authentic communication this morning, I've got some questions. And I don't have a chameleon in my throat, <laughs> I have a frog, but there he goes. Sorry about that. I think I'm going to start the questions this morning by saying grand rising. And that means I'm coming to you, Chase Steel Gray. Please tell me this morning, how are you and where are you? I am exactly how I say I am. And today I am pensive. Pensive. Ooh, I like it. And I am right here on the Daily Honey where I'm supposed to be. Absolutely. How beautiful is that? Thank you so much. We're so glad you're here all in with us this morning, Chase. Thank you so um, much. Sorrel, I haven't come to you with a question in a while. And I must ask you, how are you and what are you grateful for? I am enchanted and I'm grateful for the power of teamwork. Mm. You put a group of 50 people together who are walking in the same direction, miracles happen. I am so grateful for that. That is true. I love that. Thank you very much. And enchanted, that was unexpected. So who is Samsung? Is that CC? think so yes. yes hello darling i hope you heard my joke this morning if not i'm going to repeat it just for you but repeat right now, i just want to ask you this you did hear it no she didn't oh darn it okay you got to go back and watch the recording it was it was dedicated to you but for now i just want to ask you my darling how are you and tell us what time it is the time is now and i am well Oh, thank you for sharing. Right here. Thank I'm you. So glad to know that. All right. This morning, while we're all here connected and together, we're going to talk about a word that usually has a negative connotation, and that word is isolation. But Catherine and I have discovered that isolation might possibly be part of the secrets to more authentic, beautiful relationships. So Catherine, talk to us about isolation and relationships. Yeah, well, we talked about this, um, and I actually had a negative reaction, a little bit of a negative reaction to that word, but it came about because this past weekend, I had a whole weekend to myself, no kids, no family, and that is very rare for me, and I knew I had a lot of things that I wanted to get done. I've been tinkering in my workshop, making furniture, I had some things around the house I wanted to get done. And when I have the boys, it's full on, like I'm super busy, always doing something. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait till I get alone time. And then often what happens is they leave and there's this huge void and I get the alone time and I'm like, I, I don't know what to do. In fact, when I first got divorced and it was going, it, they were going back and forth. I, I used to say when I, when they leave, I stand in my kitchen and go, I don't know if I should go take a nap or clean the house. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know, like, it, it, and so I got to thinking because I've taken some alone time lace lately and haven't at the end of it, haven't felt as filled up as I would have liked. So I wanted to be more intentional about this weekend. Um, so I called you Tara, because I know you have uh, an alone time retreat coming up. And that started the conversation of how do you do it? How do you take alone time? I want to be creative this weekend. I have the space. For me, there's a few ingredients into being creative and one of them is space. It's hard for me to be creative when I don't have a lot of space, but what are the other ingredients that I need to really make this 
the best possible weekend so that it fills my reservoir. And we had a couple of, of thoughts about that that I want to share. But before I do, I want to talk about why alone time, why isolation, and how can that fuel your relationships? And the bottom line, at the very core, is that we all have to fill our own reservoir somehow. Some people do it by being out with people. Other people do it by being by themselves. But I truly believe that you have to know yourself and you have to take some time to reconnect with yourself in order to fill that up, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. Just like you say, Tara, we need connection because we are born to be connected to other humans. We also need connection with ourselves. And I think what I found this past weekend is that that is best done with intention, like everything else. So Tara, come in here with me and let's talk about the conversation we had about structure around alone time and isolation. And I want to hear from you. How do you think that isolation can fuel relationships? Because I know you always have a different take than I do. Yes. And I think I've learned uh, really quite honestly by trial and error. And I used to when, especially when my ch children were younger, and I think more of my days were truly like infused with trauma. Um, my ex-husband would take the kids, okay, just for a night. Mm -hmm. And um, all of a sudden, I didn't have to work. I didn't have to do whatever. And I would just crash down into nothingness mm -hmm. and just do nothing. Watch something stupid on TV, just be lazy, have popcorn for dinner and Nothing wrong with doing that every once in a while, but it didn't, as you say, fill my reservoir. It didn't make me a better version of myself. It didn't elevate my relationships. So what I've learned is that if I have alone time, even if it is just one evening, so we'll take a full weekend, which I highly recommend, and I'm sure you do too. If you just have like one evening to yourself, um, I think just a little bit of discipline will help for that time to really pay off. And so what I like to do is set an agenda for myself mm -hmm. and I will weave Netflix and popcorn into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But there'll also be some time for writing, some time for yoga, um, anything but reaching for the cell phone to call someone, to text someone. If it's going to be time alone, it truly needs to be uninterrupted so that we may truly allow our brain to flow. We may not reach flow state, which... We might get to that topic or not, but we have to allow our brain to flow. You can do it with music, but you can't do it while you have a podcast in mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can't do it while you're necessarily connecting with another friend. If you want to enjoy the benefits of isolation and the benefits of isolation are vast. Yeah. And I don't think it has to be a long time. Some people, I'm really curious if some, some people may not need this, you know what I mean? I feel like, but I know that I do every now and again just to plug back in and reconnect. It doesn't have to be a whole weekend. It doesn't even have to be a whole evening sometimes, but just sometimes it's a walk in nature by myself. And it's like, oh, right there I am, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and like I said, it does, I don't think everyone needs it in the same way, but I think the point of what I realized over the weekend, because I did have some time recently where I did this and it was it was too much space. There wasn't any structure to it. So I didn't get everything done that I wanted because I kind of was overwhelmed, you know, and I didn't feel super filled up at the end. But I think it's the intention. It's what am I looking for? What do I need to get out of this? And how do I make that happen? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't necessarily intend to bring this up, but I cannot help myself because <laughs> I'll tell you what it takes me back to. And I think where I really learned um, through someone else, what alone time and why, why I'm not afraid of the word isolation. And it goes back to when Wilson, my son was in prison. And when you're in prison, you're really never alone, but you're not in connection either. There's just constant noise. There's energy, there's self-protection. Don't touch me. Don't touch my stuff. Don't touch my food. There's competition, but there's not connection. And if anyone has been connected to someone that's been incarcerated, there's going to be a time where they go into, um, I forgot what the exact word is, but they call it like the shoe, like going into actual isolation where they put you into a cell by yourself. And it's not always because you've done something wrong. You can be sick. Wilson went in there in the beginning because that's what they do. And then he went in there once because he was twice because he was sick and once because they lost his paperwork. 
But um, anyway, to get to the point that I'm trying to make is he learned so much in those times of isolation mm. because of intention. Um, he wasn't in nature. There was no music. There was no lovely snacks and wine or whatever the case may be. He was truly forced to be alone in a concrete, isolated space. So he had to create his own nature. He had to create his own beauty from within his mind. And when he learned to do that, when he had no other choice, he could take that into spaces out into the world today. And I think that I've learned so much from that. Mm -hmm. Yes, nature is a beautiful way to connect, but it starts from deep, deep, deep within us. And interestingly, Catherine, when Wilson really learned, okay, I think I'm really going to get out of here. Um, he said to me, I want to go back. Oh, they call it the hole. I couldn't think of that word. He said, I want to go back in the hole. I want to challenge myself one more time. I may never get this opportunity again. Wow. He did it. They didn't agree, but he wanted to. Wow. Um, that's powerful. So let's explore that. Wow. Well, I think what you're reminding me of is, is the mind and the tricks it can play because um, the time when I, I, I took a week off actually and just to myself to regroup because I was feeling really burned out. And I kept making up that I needed different circumstances. You know, if only I had a little more time or if I felt a little better or if I had this thing or, and to your point, Wilson had none of that. He had four concrete walls and a roof, like that was it. And so I think that is a really powerful statement about challenging ourselves to really get clear about, again, what it is we want and how are we going to get it? and choosing. And, you know, um, this is going to sound like a really odd statement, but we don't have the luxury that he had in prison. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. We don't have the luxury of not consuming our brains with what we should be doing, who we should be calling, what we should be getting accomplished, where we should be. We have so many options out here in what he calls the real world. And so for us to take time totally by ourselves is so foreign that I would imagine some folks who are listening are thinking, and myself included, like really being alone, no noises, no nothing, feels like anxiety. Absolutely. That's what I started to feel. And actually there was a, a track running in my brain about I should be doing something else. I should be doing something That's else. Me. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I explored that a little bit with myself, like, well, what else is it? You know, like, is it laundry? Is it calling a friend? Is it, and it, and it wasn't really a productive thought process. It was, it was like a distraction almost. It was anxiety, you know, like feeling dis, um, uncomfortable. It was disarming to have total alone time and freedom and open space to just choose because in my life anyway, I, I mean, most of it is dictated by work deadlines, time, kids get to school, somebody's got to eat, you know, all these things. And so I respond a lot to life. Mm -hmm. And I've been in an exploration process with myself about how do I create life, even amongst all of these things that are structure boundaries and they need responding to, how do I create and get a little bit ahead of the curve so I can feed them, but I can do it in the way that I want to, instead of just responding and having all that open space there's not a lot to respond to except internal desires, intuition, inklings of things I want to do, urges, you know, and that is so foreign to operate from holistic, like holy to operate from there. So answer this then for me, if you can, and I'll see what others think as well. Um, you know, isolating ourselves, whether it's for an evening, a morning or a weekend, um, if we can get past the anxiety of it, is it just a break or can it give us something more? Ooh, I mean, it can absolutely give us something more. Absolutely. And like I said, it doesn't even have to be a long time. It is, yeah, it can totally give us something more. For me, it fills me back up so that I can come fully fulfilled. I get to do my own thing. It's like my literal like toddler energy or maybe even like adolescent energy where I'm like, I just want to do what I want just want to do what I want. I do what everybody else needs all day long and just want to do what I want. And so then if I get to just do what I want, then, you know, that kind of calms that part of me and get what, you know, and then I can go back in the world and serve and give and, you know, do all those things. Um, 
that's just how I operate. I've got a reservoir that gets depleted quite a bit and it needs to get filled up. And that's one of creativity, being alone, doing what I want, tinkering. I love tinkering <laughs> with no real purpose. I mean, it could be considered play. You know, it's like, um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. You look at me, I just love it. Like it just makes me feel warm inside. I can see that. I, I thank you so much for sharing that. I um, relate to that. And I, I don't know that everyone does. Like some people are much more extroverted. And, and as we know, extroverts get their energy from others. And according to my studies, even the most extreme extroverts must have some time alone for reflection, to get to know yourself, to get to know what your needs are. And you know what? We're always changing. Mm -hmm. and yeah. And I want to, before we go to Chase, I wanted to say one thing about that. I think it's really important to notice um, the busyness and is it an, in an effort to distract, you know, because sometimes I'll find myself, I even had the urge to do that with this alone time to go fill that time up with seeing people and getting it. And sometimes that's me trying to distract myself from an emotion I don't want to feel or a situation I'm not really wanting to face or so it's not, there's no right or wrong to any of this. It's simply getting to know yourself, where these urges are coming from, what the desires are, and just taking care of business. Okay, yuck, I don't want to feel this way, but I need to go deal with this so that I can be free and do all the other things I want to do. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and then we'll get right to you, Chase. I do want to share this though, and I do know this to be true. If we need reprieve and we need relief, the one thing I want to caution us against is picking up a screen to get that. I'm not saying not to watch your fun show in the evening or whatever the case may be, but it is not giving our brain the reprieve that we think it is. Reading a book can, but when we scroll through social media, it's shooting up cortisol, which is interfering with our ability to be creative and to really explore the next level of who we can be. So yeah. true. So true. Chase. This topic is electric. Um, so what I wanted to say was um, when you said, well, I was I was quiet and I and then I was so quiet for so long I got anxiety. And I was thinking, well, you know, being quiet or, or putting yourself into a place, I don't know why, but for me, isolation brings to mind a, a, a negative connotation. Like when I say isolation, it feels like I'm just cut off from everything, everything. And I would use a different word in that particular sense. But um, me having this crazy moving artist, electric lizard brain all the time, when I meditate for like usually 10 to 20 minutes, I feel something has actually given me extra, extra space because I closed my mind down and I'm totally the person who needs meditation. Trust me. And after that, I have a different capacity going forward. Like even if you think about someone learning an instrument, most people quit instruments because they don't get good in the time their brain tells them they should do that. Oh, this is not great. I'm wasting my time. When in actuality, you are training your, your fingers if you're playing an instrument or your voice to do something different. And it is changing. Mm -hmm. It's just not changing to the level that you think it should. So when you're meditating, you are changing. When you are by yourself alone with nothing to do, your brain is going, thank you so much. You have no idea that how good this is, but we read it as unproductive, should be doing something. This is a waste of time. And if you go past a certain point, for some people it's 20 days, for some people it's 10, for some people it's 90 days, the other side is magical. I know because I experience it because I absolutely need it. So my, my, my biggest point is do it. Keep doing it if you want to gain the space, not to feel that it's not there. You'll know when meditating has to happen. Like, oh, I'll go, I got to do my meditation. Like, it'll start to be like a must. And that's when the magic happens. Mm, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's a great reminder. Thank you so much. Because I know that when I fall off of writing or meditating, I get bitchy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that, Tara. Don't do it. <laughs> Keep doing your stuff. Thank you, Chase. That's great. Cece. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, getting quiet to listen to 
God is a practice that I use and I would love to take 40 days to do it with no outside uh, interference. And I plan on doing it soon. I don't know when, but I'm going to do it to see what God would reveal to myself about, you know, life or what, how I need to proceed forward. And I see it as a opportunity to grow and to expand spiritually because of being quiet. So I'm not looking at other things or being distracted by worldly things like paying bills, like going to do this, errands, all this mm -hmm. other stuff, Pe other people's requests, you know, just being distracted by ordinary life. So I'm going to be intentional about uh, isolating so that I can be in, in the presence of God and hear him and know it's him and not all these other voices that are competing. So um, thank you so much for the topic and I pass. Thank you, Cece. I love that you brought that in because we didn't really specifically talk about listening, you know, and really you know, I said it in terms of urges, but it is listening to what is wanting to come through us. What are, you know, what are we hearing? What's being wanted? Want, what is being asked of us, you know? So I love that you brought that in. Thank you. I'm going to remember that next weekend, Cece, when I'm alone. I'm going to be listening. So thank you. Hey, uh, hey guys. Um, you know what? I, I uh, totally can relate to Wilson case, Wilson situation you know, wanting to go back in there, um, you know, for it's, it's really go for me like this. If I spend a lot of time outside of my studio, I am, I get to a point where I'm not good company. Mm -hmm. And, and as, as happy I go, you know, around being happy and, and, you know, go lucky, go fine you know, that time alone is critical for my balance. And, uh, and um, you know, it, it's it's where I, I do, it's, it's basically my freedom land, so to speak. So, so like I said, I mean, for wanting to go back and be, you know, strict structurally enveloped, you know, in a structural envelope, envelope where you you don't have the distraction or the noise you know uh i go uh, that was one of my first purpose when i when i actually you know decided to build my studio so so if if you can have an envelope or closet or somewhere that you can lock yourself in sometime i mean that's the best man <laughs> i can totally relate i just wanted to add that I, I was actually really hoping that you would speak up, Ronald, now that I know about your art. And that was a beautiful reminder because our question is, how can isolation improve relationships? And I think you just said it. Um, it fills you up, right? Yeah. And if we're filled up, then we have something to give. Yeah. And if we're empty and depleted, you can't give away what you don't possess. Right, so you don't thank have. you yeah. for that beautiful reminder. And I'm so glad you have that art for yourself and for um, the eyes of the world. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Ronald. Sorrell. Good morning, Catherine and Tara. Oh my God, amazing conversation. What it's bringing up for me is the opportunity to not wait until I'm empty to go to isolation, to fill up. Uh, you know, I, I take frequent naps and it turns out that naps actually add up to sleep. I never thought of it that way. I thought you had to sleep eight hours, right? <laughs> As opposed to maybe you could take two or three naps and that's good. So instead of waiting for 40 days or 10 days or even a weekend, I'm going to inject in my days the practice of isolating, even if it's for a minute or two. Like mm -hmm. there's something that I'm hearing from your speaking that isolation brings that I'll just assert that it brings it even in small portions. 
And so to the extent that I can shut it all off, maybe I go to a closet and close the door, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. and just isolate myself for five minutes and walk back out. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to try that out. That's what it brings up for me. I love it. I'd love to hear what that does for you. You know, I think I totally agree that it does. There's no time limit. There's no or minimum time. Because when I think about it, what came up for me is I think about, well, connection. Terry, you and I know we don't need a whole week together to be connected and be completely filled up by our relationship and our friendship. We need, you know, we can do that in three minutes. And so why is the opposite not true? You know, which it is true, right? I can take five minutes by myself and get completely filled up. You know, I I may not, but that's definitely a possibility. So, and I think it's also just, um, yeah, again, I think it's the choice, the choice that we make in our minds and the intention behind it. Um, Tom, I'm, I'm, I'm loving that you came on because Sorrell said he takes frequent naps, which you do too. So Uh, before before Tom, uh, um, I want to make sure we get to Lizette's question as well. So go for it. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you. Good morning. I, you know, that's a really good point. Like what Ryan was mentioning and Sorrel there, the awareness that there's something you can do to, you know, help reinvigorate yourself through the isolation. Because I think without that mindfulness, you know, there's a tendency you can just keep getting ground down by you know, whatever your responsibilities are, your, your interactions. And so appreciating the benefit of what that does for you is really, really helpful. Uh, Cause if I just from personal experience it, without that understanding, then there's a tendency to almost lunge toward the people around you as you feel like you're getting too worn down to try to prop you up. When in fact, that's not what you need. What you need is that, you know, recenter yourself and, and then, you know, re-engage. So uh, thank you for describing it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. And I think we do need people at times to lean on, you know, but I think you're saying it's like, you know, just know when it's too much, or are you really doing that as a distraction away from your center? Do you really need to reground when you're leaning or do you need to lean when you're trying to reground, but not able to, I think it's knowing what, what you need when. Yeah. Yeah. This, um, I have learned so much from listening to you all and really exploring this. Um, before we close, though, I want to address Lizette's question because I'm so glad she brought this up. <laughs> yeah. And her question, and now I'm paraphrasing, is can we prepare our loved ones? They may not welcome our time alone. Mm-hmm. And you know, so I'm thinking about Sorrel, a minute or two. What if we take an hour? What if we take a half a day? And I want to say this to all the folks of Lizette's generation. There used to be a day when we would leave our house and no one could reach us because we weren't carrying around a cell phone. We all survive. So my recommendation to communicate with your loved ones is to say, I'm going to begin a practice of taking time to myself so that I may show up even better for you. And that's not the only reason we do it, but that's part of it. But communicate it to your loved ones that you're doing this in honor of them. And if that's what's preventing you from taking time away, then just proactively tell them my phone will be off and I will be showing up even better for you because of this time away. Um, even like Sorrel said, you know, a few minutes, I, I would call it your isolation station. So <laughs> Love it. I'm glad that we end up using that word that normally brings up anxiety, but now we're embracing it. Yeah. Yeah. And just like you're saying, it's clear communication. That's what we talk about. And it's communication builds relationships. And so just communicate clearly, authentically. I need this. Here's why your loved ones, if they don't understand it, hopefully will engage you in a conversation. And if they, and it, you know, if they love you, they'll support you. So yeah. And with that, we're going to close out. It, it's it been, um, it's been a wonderful way to um, really dive into the conversation and hear other people's thoughts about it. And I feel like just love, love yourself, love yourself enough to take the time, um, give, and then you can give of yourself. Once you've loved yourself enough and filled your reservoir, give of your service, your love, uh, your resources, and this will allow you to be more free and to laugh, laugh out loud, to relax more and stress less, 
eat mostly plants, your body and the planet will thank you. And be sure to get that sleep. That's another way that we can fill ourselves up and um, feel resourced and rejuvenated. And then always move that body. It is here for us and what we don't use, we lose. So thank you everybody so much for the conversation and we will see you next time. Thank you. Awesome job. Thank you. Bye, thank you. Thank you all. Great day. Bye, Dio. Bye, Stan. Bye. Bye.